So here's a completely different wall type. This is an example where we're doing essentially a post and beam type setup where we have a uh, wide flange steel uh, and that wide flange steel is as a column. Uh, so I have a column going up and I have a beam going across. Uh, and then I have panels that are attached to the column and span from column to column. So these are spandrels uh, that would reach all the way across from one column to the next. Uh, this is a very different type of uh, wall than, say, uh, CMU backup uh, masonry veneer wall, where uh, that masonry veneer wall is very solid. It has uh, a, a quite a bit of thickness to it. Um, it's structural the whole length. Um, I can put load on it the whole, whole length of the wall. Um, whereas this is set up where I have uh, wide flange beams, um, I might have joists that then span from beam to beam that uh, are uh, providing uh, surface for our next floor level, um, that the thinness of the actual wall could be actually down to just a couple of inches, some sort of panels that, that are insulated and can span the distance that it takes to get from column to column. Um, so this is a kind of a much faster pace in terms of erection, uh, much uh, sort of different kind of quality of interior space and uh, whether you wrap the structure or not uh, becomes kind of important, it's like how industrial is it. So it, very quickly you can see that this is a kind of uh, use that would fit to only very particular kinds of uh, sort of general uh, occupancy types. Um, while, you know, somebody, uh, uh, architects who really like uh, kind of industrial looks of things may feel totally at home with this. It's probably not something you'd be using for most residential where you're going to have that, that kind of panel and steel uh, kind of construction system. It just doesn't fit to that very well. But it does fit to industrial uses quite uh, effectively. So again, uh, you kind of, uh, just on first glance, having an idea of uh, construction system and occupancy type, uh, things start to very quickly sort of uh, lay themselves out of which uh, are the logical ones to choose for uh, which occupancy type. Here's another example. Uh, this one's a precast. So we have a, uh, we have a foundation system and then a large panel. It could be any number of uh, uh, sizes, um, but it's one big panel that has been cast in concrete in a warehouse someplace, so that it's in a protected place. They cast the, the elements in the sort of the best possible ways. They get a good, clean finish on it. Uh, but then they have to truck it out to the site. It has to somehow get to the site. And then it has to get uh, placed on the site. So it has to be erected. So it's probably, if it's a big enough panel, uh, it's probably going to have to have a crane or something that's going to move it around. So uh, even though it's really fast in terms of installing it, it may take a long time to get all the panels made and all of that, but in terms of time on the site, it's going to be very, very fast. But it also means I have to have cranes and I have to have access to the cranes. I have to be able to reach around and get these very large panels uh, in all those sort of logical uh, locations. Uh, whether I have insulation inside the panel um, is sort of, it becomes a more complicated precast that way, but then it means I can get the finished material of the precast on both the exterior and on the interior. If not, I have to find a way to fur out that wall and get some place where I can actually get some insulation. I'm going to start getting more expensive in terms of the panels if I want to kind of get the most out of it. Uh, in terms of the finishes and all of that, but if I want to cheapen out the process, then I have to do more work on site, and so I start losing the advantages of the speed of the process on the site. Um, the precast has a lot of advantages and a lot of disadvantages. There are going to be certain things that are going to fit readily to a precast, uh, certain kinds of uses, uh, but then there's going to be a lot of uses that just just don't make sense for that. Uh, situations where I want a lot of variety, where there's a lot of complexity to the shape of the building, those are going to be places where the precast is just not going to really make much sense. Uh, but places where there's a lot of repetition, where I can find uh, systems of, of use where the repetition is going to be, actually be to my advantage, uh, then that's a perfect spot for that kind of precast. And if you start thinking about some of the possibilities of what might go with the precast, you, maybe you could have a, say, flexicore type uh, precast uh, flooring system, which is a, a precast uh, span, spanning system. That uh, element, which usually then would have a topping on the top and sort of keep it all as one sort of general kind of system. So I have precast for the walls and then precast for the floor structure. 
what that would allow is the same crane that I use for the one I can use for the other. So I can very, very quickly on the site assemble something that I can then be standing on and doing the rest of the work as opposed to a lot of the other systems where I have to uh, slowly build things up and it's hard to, I don't have a floor to stand on while I'm building the, the, the wall and et cetera, et cetera. So the precast is a bunch of advantages, but obviously a bunch of disadvantages. And then uh, there's all kinds of other examples, the solid concrete. Uh, this is an example of solid concrete with a steel uh, interior frame. It's a little unusual. You'd think normally it would be a concrete interior frame. But um, these, are, these are all different ways. We could come up with uh, you know, uh, 40 or 50 of these different kinds of, of quick sketches of different ways of thinking about uh, what kinds of wall types, what, what are the construction systems that we would think, and then trying to match them to an appropriate situation. So this idea of the comparison between the construction system and the occupancy, the uh, location, um, can I get a crane in there, can I not get a crane in there, uh, the labor pool, like what, uh, what do people know how to do in that location, uh, the context of the place, what makes sense, uh, is it an urban space and it has to fit with other urban buildings that maybe you're in a context that's very masonry focused, then you know, coming in with a big metal panel system may not make the most sense. So uh, this is just all to say that a big part of thinking about these things is kind of finding the appropriateness of the construction system for all of those other issues, uh, precedence, context, uh, occupancy, uh, safety, uh, maintenance, um, all of those things, how they kind of relate to the construction systems. Um, there is no really right and wrong here. There's really just sort of uh, feeling comfortable with your ability to make decisions. So that's something you want to start thinking about is how do you start making decisions with the, the limited information that uh, is going to be given to you uh, on any given exam question, how do you feel comfortable making a decision about which is the appropriate system uh, for that scenario? It's like, what is the driving force? Is it about the user? Is it about the context? Is it about sustainability? Is it about durability? Is it about uh, fire safety? Uh, is it about the robustness of the structure? Uh, and then once you can say what one of those things, uh, which one of those is it, it's about, well then it'll lead you to certain uh, types of construction systems that will be logical answers for those kinds of questions.